Oro na English para na brutaya si kere na meke. Ah yeah, Papa's got some good news for you tonight. Hallelujah. Malanga jeka roma. Hey man, deliverance is in the house. I'm telling you, good things are happening right now for you. Just reach out and take a hold of them. Listen, Jesus Christ is here. We don't want any man to be seen. We all want to be hid in in, in a place where only Christ Jesus is hid. Now you can go ahead and agree with this tonight because Father wants to do great signs and wonders and miracles so that nobody can even think about men. They can't even think about men. It's too powerful for it to be men. They will then recognize that truly the Spirit of God is in us. That's, that's what they knew about Daniel. I mean, look, these are a bunch of heathen people don't even have any kind of Bible around to study. And Daniel had such a power of God manifested in his life that said, this is the great power of the living God. And tonight we want you, we want you to participate with us in, in such a touch from heaven. Hallelujah. Do you want a touch from heaven? How many of you would like to have a touch from heaven? Father, we thank you that in your mercy, and in your grace, such a touch, such a radical encounter is going to be the experience of every person in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, before I have Tim come, I want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord with offerings. And some people don't understand this. They think that they're just giving some money to help pay the bills. And, and it's really, you know, that's not what this is about. All worship. The Lord, Jesus said in John chapter 4, when he was dealing with an unlikely candidate for salvation, an unlikely candidate for visitation. There was a lot of, you might say, holy women of God around that Jesus could have gone and spent some time with, but he found a woman from Samaria. She belonged to the wrong religion. She belonged to the wrong culture, the wrong nationality, and she was completely wrong in every dimension of her life. She'd been married five times, and she was living with a man who wasn't her husband. Jesus had nothing to say, no condemnation. Just simply said, I got a gift for you. And the gift was going to tra transform and change her life. Of course, he did address the fact that she was living with a man who wasn't, she wasn't married to. And, of course, around God, Holy Ghost, around the real Jesus, around the real ministry of the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost conviction will grip your heart and you will be instantly convicted of your sins, reproved of your sins, and recognize that it ain't supposed to be anywhere near your life. And it takes care of it all. But he looks at the woman and he says, listen, I've got a drink for you and it'll come out of your belly as a wellspring of life, speaking of the very life of God existing within men, which had been completely lost from any realm in which men lived in. And he really ultimately opened up the door for all of us to understand what it means to worship the Father in spirit, in the Holy Spirit and in truth. And this is really what he was getting at. And it's where he brought her. He said, Father's been looking for those who would worship him in spirit and truth. And we want you to understand that worship is a thanksgiving, but worship is an acknowledgement of God and, and a bringing to him uh, uh, the offering of yourself and an honoring of him that first finds is all of its expression and bringing an offering that represented Jesus. And you find it in the book of And God, Call, and God Called Out, which is popularly known, popularly known as Leviticus, but actually known as And God Called Out. And said, if any man wants to get close to me, as close as you possibly can get, let him bring an offering. And the offerings are described there, but they all represent a Jesus. Tonight, we want you to bring an offering that represents Christ Jesus. It represents the way that you feel about him. Because the Lord says, wherever your treasure is, there is where your heart will be. And I pray that all your treasures in Jesus. And I want you to know the anointing that God has given to everybody who receives this new life is a powerful means of not only authorizing you as a son of God, not just any son of God, not like Adam, not like angels, but as the son of God, Christ Jesus, because that's where we find who we are. It's just only and all in him. Understand that. When we come tonight, we, we understand that he has given us an anointing that also is provision for us. It's protection for us. The anointing protects. Ask David and his mighty men. Huh? Ask Saul until ultimately the event of Gilboa. The anointing is protection. Hallelujah. Aaron sinned as much as Miriam did. Miriam fell on, on uh, 
and rather leprosy fell on Miriam's head for her transgression, but because Aaron was clothed in the holy garments that represented his anointing, he was untouched by it. But one day he took off his clothes and he, he took off his garments and he died. I'm telling you, people, there is an anointing here to preserve you, to protect you, so that you can stand against all the wiles of the enemy and nothing can by any means harm you. You can tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of Satan. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Man, I know a lot of nations is that's good news tonight. I'm, we're going to watch, we're going to watch the, the tens of thousands in Mongolia rush the altar, rush the kingdom of God. While wow, many people who've sat around and heard the good news gospel message for many years just wonder at it and look upon these glorious things. But we don't want that for any of you tonight. Hallelujah. We want you to rush on the things of the kingdom. Amen. Uh, uh, hallelujah. Praise God. Kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Praise God. We're not going to let anything stand in our way. We don't want to let anything stand in your way tonight. But just, I just want you to understand, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom. And I'm telling you, Jesus is the king of the kingdom, and he is the centerpiece of seeking first the kingdom. If you're going to seek the kingdom, you're going to be seeking Jesus. He's the centerpiece of the kingdom. He's our access. He's our doorway in. He's, the, he's, our, he's our purchase price. He's our everything. He's our all in all. Hallelujah. 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 So we're going to worship the Lord. We're just going to worship him. We're bring an offering that represents Jesus. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm also, at the same time, I'm confident that there's miracles in the house on every, on every level. There's miracles in the house for the issue of, a, of sin in your life. The issue of a miracle for the new birth. There's miracle in the, in the house tonight for your physical body. You're dealing with sickness and disease. There's miracle in the house tonight so that your eyes can be open to the supernatural strength of the Lord so that you can take into yourself the whole armor of God and stand against all the wild tricks of Satan and going around lying and wait to deceive. Hallelujah. There's a supernatural provision tonight so you can live in divine health, that you can live the life of the overcomer, the more than conqueror. There's a night, there's a provision, a miracle in the house tonight for your finances. And we don't want you to have finances so you can have a better house and a nicer car. We want you to have finances so you can take care of the widows, the orphans, the traveling ministries, the, the, the local church. Hallelujah. And the poor. Five things the Lord so he must think, Father must think that we're rich. He must. If he's told us we've got to take care of these five things. Hallelujah. And actually put some percentages on some of the stuff. He must think we're rich. And I would believe, I believe we should be going ahead and hook up with whatever it is he's thinking. Hallelujah. So we can do his business in the earth. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Father, I thank you so much for the miracle right now. Father, I thank you for the willing and the obedient hearts that sit in this place here tonight. That are willing to participate with this ministry that you brought here into San Diego. That we've been allowed by you to partner with. Father, we pray tonight in Jesus' mighty name that Tim Hall Ministries will receive an offering that will be a great blessing to the ministry. Father, we thank you that you take what is sown here tonight and you multiply it to the giver and that you multiply it to the ministry as well. Father, we thank you for the special anointing and special gifting that you placed upon your servant. And Father, we thank you that in these last days, it will be greater than any other days that the things that have tried to stand in the way to slow down this wonderful anointing that you have purposed to run to the nations of the earth will speed up. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for physical strength. Lord, we thank you for financial strength, provision in every way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want you all, please, if you would, please just stand with me here. Just stand with me. And we're going to beseech you by the mercies of the Lord Jesus Christ that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, one that's holy and acceptable unto God. Tonight, I'm beseeching you. I'm telling you there is a great reward in it. Dear people, we're running a race to get a prize that defies the imagination. We're running a race that we might obtain a prize, a reward that defies the imagination. And that is the resurrection of the dead, to be able to see him as he is, for we shall be like him. 
And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you will under, understand tonight and discover the great revelation, the great relationship that comes from a simple response of saying, from this day forward, I'm going to live my life as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. I want you to know tonight that you're saints. That means you're holy ones. That, that means you're holy. Somebody said, is there anybody holy in the house? I am. Jesus gave it to me as a free gift. It's a gift of holiness. Somebody said, is there anyone in righteousness, righteousness in the house? I am. It's a free gift been given to me. It's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We want you to have this boldness because we want you to have the access. Amen. Hallelujah. We want you to, we don't want anything about your life to define you except for Jesus. That's all we want. To, that's all we want defining you. In Jesus' name, from, I'm telling you, I'm speaking the word of life to you right now. You might think I'm just talking. I'm prophesying. I'm declaring to you right now that there is an authority, a working of God's divine grace that from this time forward, you define yourself only in Jesus. Only in Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command Satan, he take his filthy hands off of you. I destroy every work that he has tried to work against you and can be no more effective in your life. I smash it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, come worship the Lord. Come, come bless the Lord. Come worship him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them while you're walking by them. It'll help you. Legendary one. You can take my Bible up for me if you like and put it up on the platform. That would be a great help to me. Yeah. Just uh, put it up on the, on the whole pulpit there. That'd be great. My friend, how are you? Bless you, man. Are you doing good? Yeah. Sister, I'm going to see you. Sister Kathy can come tomorrow night. Right. Oh, wow. Well, the old knees are like the old gray mare. They ain't what they used to be. It's not everybody carries a duck. Who, 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 who missed it? Somebody wanted, one kid wanted a drawing. I've got a monkey and a pig tonight, and I've got a duck for someone that And a lizard for someone. Someone wanted a lizard. Was it you, Lizzie? No. Did you want a lizard? Do they call you lizard at school? They weren't game. It is so good to be here. It is so good. Oh, man. It's like, it's just home. I mean, I know everybody and I've been adopted as an uncle and, you know, it's, uh, it's scary because it feels at home here as I do in Melbourne or Adelaide or Papua New Guinea or Dingo Creek or Ferret Swamps. The Spirit of the Lord's here. I, I had two really good friends back there. Um, Terry and Brother Harley Davidson. I forgot again tonight. What is it, bro? Paul. Yeah, big Paul. That's right, Paul and Timothy. Come up here for a moment, both of you. Come up. (laughs) 
In fact, just come down there. It's easier because I'm going to pray for you in a minute, and it's not great up here to be prayed for up here. Come up this way. and Just, uh, I'll come down. Hang on, I'm coming down. They're like a gazelle. I love steps. The steps were designed by the devil, I reckon, for my, just for my knees. Now, look, you guys have been blessed. Turn around this way. I'm going to just interview you for a moment. Now, Paul, Paul came up to me tonight. Paul's an old Beach Boys man. In fact, the Lord spoke to me tonight and said he, he really loved the Beach Boys, but he's surfed the right, ridden the wild. So what's the biggest wave you've ridden, Paul? Too big. How big? What's the biggest? 14 feet. That's too big. That's what I said. 14 feet. 14. And, you, and you're an old, how old are you? 53? 58? Yeah. So you're an old, an old 60s boy then, really. All the old songs, the old music, surfed, and used to have the big locks, did you, at one stage? Yeah, curly hair. Curly hair, that's it. So this week, God's touched you. Just yeah. when you came in tonight, you've never experienced meetings like this, have you? Tell us what you've experienced. Well, I, uh, I came to these meetings not knowing what to expect. I, um, I just became, a, well, I became a Christian in 1982, you know, was baptized, and I thought that was it. I thought that's all I ever needed to do. And... Uh, God has worked in, in, in amazing ways to cure an addiction problem that I had, to, to, to cut out pornography, to stop swearing, to do all these marvelous things. And, and when he started to move on me, and, and um, well, I got married to Terry, who was a, a, a very Christian lady, and, and the, the type of behaviors I had were not instrumental to a good marriage. I started praying, and, and we started seeking out churches, and, and I came to the abiding place, and I saw a man named Don Clowers here, and uh, I looked at Terry, and I said, this is what I want to do. This is the kind of life I want to live. I really want to live my life for Jesus. I don't know how. So we started searching out churches, and uh, little by little, uh, we started talking. We were reading the Bible every day. We'd get up and pray. We'd meditate. We'd talk in the Spirit. I, I, gave, I was given the gift of tongues. I didn't know what was going on. I'm, I'm just sitting there going, what? And so I called Terry to ask her what, the, what it was. And she told me. And I went, okay, I don't understand what I'm saying. She said, you don't have to. Anyway. Then we met somebody that I guess is a friend of yours on TV, uh, Rodney Brown. Uh, Terry told me about Rodney Brown, and I started watching. And, and here's what the deal is. The real deal is I started watching enough Howard, Rodney Howard Brown so that the YouTube channel started to rerun everything I had seen because I watched everything, and it's only been like two weeks. This is when I started this. With Terry, in bed, this is all we do. We watch Rodney Howard Brown. I mean, there's other things we do, too, but Rodney Howard Brown is, is the big thing. And um, the reality was something changed in me, and I wanted what he showed me on TV. And I didn't know it was possible, so I started praying for the fire. I started praying for the fire of God to move on us that we would have a revival here in this city, that God would show us tremendous things, that God would enter our hearts in a way that nothing else has ever entered our hearts, and something changed. And then we, we got an email, and, and the abiding place was going to be host for Tim. And I thought, this is what I've been praying for. This is what I want. I want to see if this is real, because anybody can act. I was a magician. I know what acting is. A magician? Yes. Prestidigitator, if you will. That's a good word for you, huh? Get some tricks after. So we came here. Doubt was, was part of what I came here with. And I'm not proud to say that, but that's true. Tim called us up. We stood here, put his hands on us, and something unexplainable hit me. And it was like everything got pulled out of me. I hit the floor, and I couldn't move. I'm not here to tell you this isn't real. This thing is real, and, and, and the Holy Spirit is moving in our home now. The Holy Spirit has grabbed a hold of us this morning. We flowed in the Spirit of God this morning. The fire is on this building tonight. We're living in the fire right now. And this man has been gracious enough to, to bless us with this gift. I wouldn't have ever thought it was possible, but it's truly changing the way I want to study the Word, the way I want to incorporate it. I want God to abide in my heart. I want Him to be my leader. 
I want to be the leader of my household, and I want God to show me how to live a righteous life. In the name of Jesus. I love it. I love it. Terry, it's been a good week, hasn't it? Yes. Uh, I felt the, the glory of God here when, I mean, just in worship and, and um, when you touched me and I fell down, it was like waves of glory just pouring over my soul, like right here. And I, I couldn't get up off the floor because the glory was so intense. And it was like I was pinned down and I was just soaking and soaking. And I, I just, I had a couple thoughts like I must look really strange down here, but it didn't matter because God was doing such a deep work inside me. And I don't know a lot of things, but I know it's real. That's what I know. I know it's real. I know Jesus is real. The Holy Ghost is real. And, and, and he's abiding. And he hoovered over my, my bed last night, just like waves and waves while I was sleeping. And I don't understand a lot of things that are going on, but I know it's real. So I just, you know, that's all I know. Oh, Father, Thank you, have some more. Yes. <laughs> Come here, Paul. The hand of God's on your life, Paul. I tell you what, the hand of God, the things you said tonight you want God to do, that's a, that's a piece of clay that God wants, is going to shape. And I reckon you've got a great future. I just feel like if you follow through those things and allow God to shape those things, the destiny ahead's incredible. Incredible. And Father, would you impart fire? <laughs> wow. That'll do you good. I'll wake you up in the morning. That'll do you good. That's God. God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit. Norma, how's the feet today? The feet. The feet are good? So the feet are healed now. The shoulder's healed. The hands are healed. The feet's healed. And you're baptised in the Holy Ghost. Oh. That's a good week. That's a good week. That's a good week. That's a good week, David. That's a good week. You've got grandpa and grandma sitting there with the grandkids. That's a beautiful blue. <laughs> Geneva Convention. Jesus. Brother's ankle was healed. People have been healed, touched. But I've just felt the glory of God. John O got his elbow healed. Who else has been healed? If you've been healed these couple of nights, give us a what was wrong, Nick? Well, you had a lot of pain, didn't you? Come here, come here. Stay with me, brothers. Do not leave and forsake me. Tell me, when did God first touch you with the power of the Holy Ghost, Nick? Come around behind the God's going to share. When did you first get hit by the power of God? <laughs> how, how many years ago was that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I forgot math. <laughs> Um, let me think. So, when I first got saved, I was in, um, I was in, <laughs> I was in, um, <laughs> I was in Mazalan, Mexico, and um, I just got saved, like, just so, like, previous to that. It was just not very long before that. And um, I got saved through this church, praise the Lord, um, Pastor Mark uh, was part. You met Pastor Mark? Yeah, I sorry. met him. <laughs> um, sorry. That's a joke. That's a, there's a number of Spitsbergens in the church. So. 3,000. <laughs> I should make this short. <laughs> no, you're doing well. <laughs> so, so I got saved through, a, uh, the Lord used um, a Christian surf movie called Sunriders, and I loved going to surf movies, and I went, and I was sitting there, and I cried the whole movie long, because these people were saying, these surfers that I could relate to were saying, Jesus is the answer, basically, in a nutshell, and that's what I was looking for, and I didn't know it, 
And I just, <laughs> I didn't understand how to grab a hold of that, but something that's deeper than our mind and anything else is God put in us. And, and that is our heart, our spirit, and the ability to grab a hold mm. by the Spirit of the Lord, His well, truth. He's, he's got a hold of you, all right. <laughs> he's got a hold of you. You radiate. And you've got the most beautiful family. But you have done such a great job with you. I love your kids. They are hilarious, but they're just lovely. They're just great kids. Lift your hands up. Turn around this way. Oh, God, the anointing. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of joy. She's a joyous one. She's a joyous one. She's a joyous one, Lizzie, isn't she? She's a joy. My friend Stewie is one of my great mates. Come down here, Stu. Stewie and I, a couple of brothers that, you know, we, we, we're not built, we're, we're built for uh, comfort, not speed. Yeah. Yeah, we're just sort of like the teddy bears of the outfit. Yes. Yeah. He looks after babies, don't you? I do. You look after them. There's a few around here. There's just a few. A healthy church has babies, and they're popping up every time I come here. There's another. It's wonderful. We've got some more on the way. How have you been? I've been wonderful, man. You're a brilliant man, you know. <laughs> Lift your hands. You're a really special guy. And you're very hungry for the anointing. Yes. And you're, you're a bit of a... You're a bit like um, Doom Sullivan up in Yosemite, he was struck by lightning seven times. The first time he was struck, his toenail was blown off. <laughs> then he got hit and his hat went flying, and then on another occasion he was struck and his shoe was found 30 feet away. He could never understand why he was constantly struck by lightning. But there's people in the church that are like that. When the anointing's around, they get struck. They just attract the anointing. Didn't they? They attract the, there's people around here. You, you've, the anointing's only got to start to flow a couple of minutes and I'll look over to Brad and he's struck. He's struck. Come here, Brad. He's struck. Come here. Come here. He just gets struck. And there's others that as soon as the anointing begins to flow, it's as though the anointing flows and zap! It's just an anointing. It's like, like Randy and Rob. See Randy in the back row. Someone go and stand behind him quickly. A couple of brothers, because he's a lightning rod. Randy is, is a, a dangerous man. And see, the lightning, there's such a thing as dry lightning. You can be 15 miles away from a storm and get struck by lightning when the sky above you is blue. It's interesting, in France, there was a stage where they went into one town and uh, the place that is most struck by lightning, Randy's gone. The, the place most struck by lightning in Europe is church spires. Well, the French were in battle against the English again somewhere, and they had all their ammunition, and they were working out where to put it. So they put it up in the belfry, in the bell tower of the church. Lightning struck, and the town I don't think exists. Hundreds were killed. But you know, some people just where the lightning is striking and you don't know when the strike. God will just strike you with his anointing. Oh, I want to be one of those like Doom Sullivan. Terry, field! Just... My brother, uh, my brother uh, that's going to Israel, I know you, I can't remember your name. Help me, come up, bro. I always forget your name. Greg, Greg. it's not Greg. No, it's not. Help me. Yeah, Mike. No, no. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Oh, God. Jesus. Just watch out. There's someone down there. Power from heaven. Watch the power plot. But see, we can just drink in the anointing. As I feel the power of God right now. I just feel... It's quite dangerous. It's quite dangerous. Our hands become dangerous. When he starts flowing through us, our hands become dangerous. I mean, I, I shouldn't have watched the movies in the old days, but I was a Clint Eastwood fan. 
And Clint had a magnum in his hand. He said, I know what you're thinking. Did I fire six shots or only five? But in the excitement, I kind of lost track. But being this is a magnum 44, most powerful handgun in the world, blow your head clean off. Got to ask yourself one question. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? And I think sometimes we get loaded up and we've got to say to the devil, do you feel lucky, punk? We speak to that disease and say, do you feel lucky, disease? Brad. Field! <laughs> nearly, nearly a good catch, fellas. Nearly a good one. Jesus. 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 There's power in the nombre de Jesus. There's power in the name belong Jesus. I'm strong too much, big blood fire. I may cook him strong, long baby long, we'll get the man to marry along this blood house. Lord too, plenty blood fire, by you come strong, long belly, this blood night. I may cook him, cook him strong. Big blood fire, long name belong Jesus, big blood. Big blood, me, I'm a must too much. Long this blood fire, Jesus, I'm strong. I mean, number one. I mean, got number. I mean, rouse him. All get his spirit no good. Make him you come up, Nupla. Nupla. Sur le nom de Jésus. C'est bien. C'est très bien. Oui. Vraiment. Je parle français un peu. Un petit peu. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach, but I feel the glory of God just descending. Like waves. Like waves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No. No. Hey. Hello, Pastor Rodney. Our, one of my greatest heroes in the faith. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown. Impacted Australia. Impacted New Guinea. One of my friends walked into the office with him one day, walked in, got six feet away, fell under the power of God, went home and he was having crusades with 20,000 people virtually from that time. Came to New Guinea with us. We got flooded out, but gee, we had a good time. Been all over Australia, been out with the Aboriginals across Australia. Loves my country. Loves Australia. I fell in love with South Africa then and America. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to preach the gospel. Are you ready? Is everybody ready? Yeah. Who's not? While I am leaping like a, a row in the high places, that's the joy of playing Aussie rules football for 11 years. I haven't got any pain, just there. They're just not working. Ten years ago, the doctor said, you need new knees. I said, I'll get some myself. Never went back. I've never been back to the doctor since. He said, your knees are shot. About 12 years ago. I said, well, that's a bit of bad luck. Well, whatever. We'll get some new ones. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, they're getting better. They're getting better. Yeah. Bouncing around like a startled gazelle. Like just about... Uh, What's that, what's that show on television, the ballroom thing where they all dance? I could get in and win that. Just probably won't. Acts 14. Acts 14, page 1377. And I want to talk about healing tonight and miracles. I believe that America, something is happening in this nation in the miraculous. 
Something is happening in America like I've never seen before in the area of miracles. The openness to the miraculous that I am feeling in this country is multi multiplied times greater than when I first came back in the 80s. It is intensified and intensified. Back there, you'd get a few healings and a few people saved. Now, there is an openness to salvation that to me is becoming a flood. And the area of healing, people are beginning to believe God, I think, in this nation like never before. If you're watching at home on the internet, I want you to believe God that right there at home tonight, God will touch you. One of the things I want to do tonight is talk not just about getting a miracle, but I want to talk about moving in the area of the miraculous because my Bible tells me these signs shall follow them that believe. Not these signs shall follow the guest preacher or the pastor or the apostle, but these signs shall follow them that believe. And we're believers here tonight. How many would say I'm a believer? Therefore, these signs shall follow. Father, would you anoint your word now with great, and, and let it be with great power, with great demonstration. I pray that every word tonight would be alive and strong. In Jesus' name, and everybody said. Amen. Acts 14 begins like this. It came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude of Jews and of the Greeks believed. This is Paul and Barnabas. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected. That's still happening today. People stirring things up to make people evil affected against Christianity. Long time therefore, they abode there speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony. That word testimony is the Greek word maturio, which means to bear witness, to bear legal witness. A long time they abode there speaking with boldness and by the manifest power and demonstration of God, they were bearing witness. Acts 1.8 says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you to bear witness of me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth. And that word to bear witness is martyrio, which means, it's the word from which we get martyr, but it really means uh, to bear legal witness, to put a seal on something that says this is legally so. And every time there's a miracle, we declare and stamp the fact that Jesus is alive from the dead. Acts 4.33 says this, and with great power, great dunamis, great divine ability, great miraculous divine ability, gave the apostles witness or bore the apostles witness, materio again, of the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead. Miracles are evidence. They're evidence. Miracles today bear witness. When Norma came in here with a doctor's certificate saying, or, or a thing regarding surgery and showed me the paper, and the Holy Ghost stepped in, Jesus stepped in, in his name, the power of God went through her shoulder, and she lifted her arm, and then her hands were healed, then her feet were healed, and she was baptized in the Spirit. That bore witness of the fact that the gospel we're preaching is true. Jesus said, if I don't do the works of my Father, don't believe me. But even if you don't believe my words, believe my works, that you might know that the Father is in me, and I'm in him. Jesus said, if I don't do the works, don't believe me. He says to the world, if the church doesn't do the works, don't believe them. And he said, even if you don't believe the words that we speak, believe the works, that you might know that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. Why should the church feel that the world has to believe us? if we don't move in signs, wonders, and demonstration. Why should they believe us? Some years ago, T.L. Osborne, and many of you probably don't know T.L. and Daisy, but they began to do mass crusades that had never been seen on the same scale across the earth. But they went to India as young people. 
And they became totally frustrated because in India, people would come to them and they'd say, this is the Vedas, our sacred writings of the Hindus. This is our sacred writing. This is the Word of God. He'd say, no, this is the Word of God. And they'd say, prove it. And he couldn't do it. Then Muslim people would come with the Quran and they'd say, ah, the Quran is the Word of God. He'd say, no, this is the Bible. And they'd say, prove it, and he couldn't prove it. And they came back to, to America devastated. And they said, what do we do? And T.L. went away into a house, locked himself in there, and began to seek the face of God in a beach house or somewhere for 21 days, crying out to God, crying out to God that God would come and evidence the Word, that God would come and perform the Word. This is an active gospel. This is a demonstrated gospel. The Apostle Paul said, when I came amongst you, he said to the Corinthians, I did not come with the persuasive words of the wisdom of men, but I came in the demonstration of the Spirit and power that your faith may not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. I didn't come with persuasive words. I came in power and demonstration. It's a demonstrated gospel. Weekend before last, a lady pulled the oxygen out of her nose, got out of the wheelchair. I got in, I got stuck. Pushed the wheelchair around. And then miracles just broke out right through the building. I didn't have to say anything. I love the story. The man at the gate, beautiful, standing there, totally healed. And the Sanhedrin spoke and they said, there is a notable miracle has occurred and we cannot deny it. A notable miracle that we cannot deny. What is the answer in our society? The demonstration of God in such a dimension that it cannot be denied. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. 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 He's the God of the miraculous. The Bible says here, this is my introduction, they were speaking boldly in the Lord and they gave testimony under the word of His grace. God did by granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. The Bible says He broods over His word to perform it. He watches over it. He guards his word to perform it. He is watching over the word tonight to perform it. The Bible says in the, in the book of uh, Isaiah 55, verse 10, 9, 10, 11 there, it says, as the rain comes from heaven and the snow and waters the earth and the earth brings forth, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void or empty, but it shall accomplish the thing for which it has been sent. God's word is different to any book in the world. It stirs that incredible thing called faith. It stirs that strange thing that you can't explain that brings a contact into the heavenly realm and draws some miraculous thing from God into our circumstances. Faith doesn't come by seeing. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. Paul prayed in Ephesians 1. He said, I cease not to pray that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. He said, you see with these eyes, but they're deceptive. Our brother was saying before, Brother Paul, I won't ask him because he's out to it at the moment, but he was a magician. And I, I actually quite enjoy watching magicians. I try and work out what they're doing. I never can quite work it out, but I'm watching to see if they're hiding that thing somewhere, what they're doing, and never successful watching. But what they do is illusion. And the eye is reading one thing, but what they're seeing is not really the truth. And life's like that. There's an awful lot of things we see. We get a doctor's report that says, you are critically ill. And that's a fact, but it's not truth. It's a fact, but it's not truth. 
the truth is, the greater truth is, by his wounds we were healed. Then it gets down to which will you believe? Which report? Will you believe the fact or will you believe the truth? Abraham considered not his body as yet dead, neither, I shared it last night, neither the corpse-like state of Sarah's womb. He didn't look at it. But he looked to the God who raises the dead and calls the things that be not as though they are. And he became a father at about 100 years old with a wife in her 90s. There they were walking the street with a pram and a little baby crying in the pram. And Abraham and Sarah pushing the pram saying, that's it, damn, I'm getting out just get home. You see, fact and the truth of the word of God can be a mile apart. Paul prayed, he said, I cease not to, to pray that the eyes of your understanding, that you won't see differently. He said, I want to open the faith eyes that you might know the hope of your calling and the riches of your inheritance in glory in the saints and the unlimited magnitude of divine power, us would who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he exerted into the dead body of Jesus when God raised him from the dead and set him in his own right hand in heavenly places far above all rule, principality, power, dominion, put all things under his feet, which is the church, the overflowing, the pleroma, the overflowing fullness of him, who overflows with all the fullness and fills all in all. He pours himself into us and we overflow to a dying world. We're a fragrance of Christ under God and a fragrance of Jesus to a dying world. We are the fullness of him who fills all in and all. We are the overflowing fullness. We are so filled. He says, be ye constantly being filled so that you will overflow and fill others, so that you're an overflowing vessel flooding into lives. I don't want to flood into one or two. I want the overflowing fullness of God to flow out of me into millions of lives. We're going into Mongolia next year. I had a phone call today. Do you want to do a major crusade on Cyprus? I said, yes. Do you want to go back into Turkey and do a big thing in Turkey? Yes. Do you want to go into the Philippines? We've got this massive, yes. Do you want to go into Vanuatu and do a massive, yes. Yes. Do you want to go to Ethiopia and preach to 200,000 a night? Yes. Overflow on a scale beyond anything I've known before. Yes. Trying to get through the introduction. The Bible says that there was an assault made, verse 5, made both of the Gentiles and also the Jews to despitefully hurt them and use them and then to stone them. And they became aware of it, Paul and Barnabas, and they took off. And sometimes there's a time to make a retreat. You don't have to stay there and get killed. Maybe a time you do. I talked to Pastor Reinhard Bonnke one day and I said to him, I said, Pastor Monk, have you ever been afraid? He said, many times we have run for our lives. <laughs> uh, one of the brave people of history. But he said, there's a time for a retreat. The Bible says they were aware of it, and they fled to Lystra and Derby, cities of Lycaonia, and into the region that lies around about. And there they preached the gospel, the good news. Tonight it is the good news. Someone say the good news. Yeah. Not good news, good news. Say it through your nose. News. Yeah. Australian, news, good news. Yeah. All together now. Mm, 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 news. News. Yeah. Not news, news. Yeah. Talk Australian, help me. I'm getting homesick. There he preached the good news. What is the good news tonight? The good news tonight is that Jesus Christ is the one by whom the world was created, for whom, and by whom all things hold together. 
He's the one who was the preeminent one. He's above all. He's the king of glory. All power is given in his name. He is the ultimate being of the entire universe. All authority is in his name. And the good news is that he is in authority in every area of your life and mine. He's in authority in every aspect and element that you'll allow him into. If God be for you, who can be against you? Welcome back. Paul's back. Balaam was commissioned to curse the children of Israel. He came back and he said, they are uncursable. However, if we can get them to compromise and mingle, we'll defeat them. Walking in God, you're uncursable. Walking in the blood of Christ and the life of God, you are uncursable. When we start to compromise our walk, we become vulnerable and we become open to deceit and even to destruction. Sounds like something Pastor Mark would preach. I got it from his notes. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Paul's preaching the good news. As he's preaching, there's a man sitting in the dust. Now, Luke likes to give you details. He'll tell you everything. Luke says, there was a certain man at Lystra. He was impotent at his feet. His feet didn't work. Being a cripple from his mother's womb, so he's been a total cripple from his mother's womb. He's impotent at his feet, and he's never has walked. So Luke's saying he was crippled, he couldn't walk. He's been like that from his mother's womb. Uh, he can't walk, he's a cripple. He just wanted to emphasize the fact that this guy's feet didn't work. You pick that up in that verse. The guy, Luke liked a bit of detail. He, he liked to give you a little bit of detail. He's a doctor. It's a miracle that his book, Acts and Luke, were ever understood if he writes like most doctors write their prescriptions. Must have had a scribe. That's a joke. It's a theological, I know it's a heavy one. Okay, well, we'll move on. He's preaching. There's a guy sitting in the dust. Paul's preaching the gospel. As he's preaching, oh, good work. Bob the Builder, you can do it. He's watching him. He's watching him. He's preaching. And he's watching. He's watching. A good preacher watches. We, we are eagle-eyed people. You're watching to see, and you can pick up how people are thinking and who's getting opened up to the pit. You not walk on anyone or I'll kill them. He's preaching and watching. And he's watching and he's preaching. Because as he's preaching, the word of God is working. It's working. The word is life to them that find it. It's health to all their flesh. So shall my word be, says God, as I shared before, that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to your void, but it will accomplish the thing for which it's been sent. Jeremiah said his word is like a fire burning in my belly. It's a hammer. It's a hammer that will break in pieces the rock of the most stubborn resistance. It's a fire that will burn a cancer out of your body. It's alive. Hebrews 4.12 says it's alive, it's sharp, it's active, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword cutting the fine line between soul and spirit, joint and marrow, even to the discerning of the thoughts of the human heart. The Bible says it is sharp, razor sharp. Like no, I had a friend, I had a few, and a few enemies. I hope they can, are they getting sound up there, guys? I hope they are. I should have that lapel on, but I, I've heard, haven't I? I've heard. I was in the Solomon Islands. When I was in the Solomons, I stayed in this hotel. You have to go on like a train up a rail 
to get to your room. You get on this funny looking thing. If it, if it broke down and went out of control, you'd land out in the middle of Savo Bay and drown out there with the warships. We're right here on Guadalcanal preaching. And I was up in this room and it was evening and I was sitting there. The meeting was coming up and it was that late afternoon, beautiful time when the cicadas are making all their funny noises and you can smell the hibiscus and just that tropical South Pacific touch. And I looked across and there was a guy in the next building and he, he got off the, on the rail and he said, Pastor Tim Hall. I said, yeah, it's me. He said, oh, I've got to tell you a story. Come over, I'll put the kettle on. That's Australian food, do you want a cup of tea? Hot tea, English style, with milk and one and a half. And I went over there and he said, I've got to tell you a story. He said, I was diagnosed last, last year with a tumour on my brain, a galloping tumour on my brain. And he said, this thing was going to kill me. And he said, the surgeon spoke to him and said, you've got to have this operation. He said, he said, we can remove it if we move now. But he said, the danger is that when we do, there's a strong chance, unfortunately, the position of it will leave you blind. It's a real possibility. He said, are you ready to go straight in for surgery? We need to operate now. He said, no, I'm not. He said, I want to go away and spend a bit of time and just seek God. He said, okay, how long do you want? He said, give me two weeks. He went into a beach house and he got down on the beach every day and he'd walk up and down quoting from the scriptures. I am the Lord, your physician. Exodus 15, 26. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of all of his benefits who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Psalm 107, he sent his word and he healed them. Isaiah 53, who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew before us as a, uh, a shoot out of dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness that we should desire him. But we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The well-being of our peace was upon him and by his wounds we were healed. And then Matthew 8, verse 16 and 17, they brought at evening all that were possessed of devils and diseased and he cast out the devils with his word and healed them all that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself, bear our disease, carry our pains. And 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes we were healed, so on. Speaking the word, speaking the word, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. The word is sharp and it's active and it's living. And he went back and he said, I'm ready. And the doctor said, okay. He said, we'll, we'll do the surgery. We'll do the surgery. He said, we're going to open you up. We're going to take out a section of your skull. And he said, then you'll come back to the room. And when you get back, your eyes are going to be covered and we'll give it a few days before we know What's happened with your sight? Well, they put him in. He woke up in recovery and he felt great. And he was looking around. And the doctor came into the room. And the doctor began to weep. And he said, what happened? And the doctor said, we took the section of skull to start. But when we did, someone had gone in before us. Someone had gone in before us. The doctor said, whoever this doctor was, the stitching was something that no doctor on earth could do. But he just left a little mark to say, I've been here. He said the thing was gone, taken by the king, just leaving a nice little suture mark as a little statement, I've been here. I visited. You see, the word is sharp. And so as you're preaching the word, you're watching. You're watching. Paul was watching him, looking for something, watching him, watching to see when he was ripe for his miracle. Because you see, Jesus never responded to need. He responded to faith. Paul here didn't respond to need, but to faith. 
Jesus didn't go and just meet every need. He said, I only do what the Father tells me to do. You say, well, there were times when everybody that came and touched him were healed. Yeah. Every person that came in faith and touched him believing got their miracle. In fact, Jesus was very quick to tell people that touched him, like the little one with the issue of blood. Daughter, your faith just made you whole. I didn't heal you. You just drew the divine faith because I felt you, by your touch, pull the power of God out of my body. There's a time to touch and there's a time to be touched. There's a time to speak a word. There's a time to just speak a word of faith. There's a time to wave your hand. I remember one night waving my hand over a congregation of 10,000 and from front to back, every person went down under the, under the ground, under the power of God, everyone. Whole congregation vanished. I looked around for a while and went home. Had a coffee. <laughs> Jesus did it, I went home. Thanks for it. Next night was so much rain, we got washed home. First night we left, next night washed out. Bible says that Paul, hang on a sec, just wait one moment folks, just hang on. Oh yes, that's a lot better. <laughs> yes, very difficult trying to preach when you need to blow your nose. It's a biological function that <laughs> goes back to Roman times. Even the Carthagians, the Sumerians. So it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. The Bible says the man was listening to Paul speak, who's steadfastly beholding him. That Greek word is etanizo, which is the same word that was used when the angels were staring into the cloud when Jesus went. Paul was steadfastly beholding him, looking for that flicker of faith, looking for that moment to move, Michaela, to pounce, to pounce. And as preachers, we ought to preach like a coiled up snake ready to strike, waiting for the moment to strike. Because too often, we pray for people when they're not ready. And all we do is reinforce their unbelief. We used to line the people up. Most of them had no faith whatsoever. I've had people say, I've been prayed for by everyone. I've prayed for by this preacher, that preacher, but you might as well have a shot, see what you can do. Don't say that to me now. Don't say that now. To me, that's almost like Herod saying to Jesus, do a dance for me. Paul preached until suddenly he perceived, the word is Ido, he knew in himself. There was an inner knowledge that he was ready for his miracle. I'll tell you something, you can see when people are ready to get healed. I can feel in this building right now that there are people ready to receive something from significant for, from God. Do you need a miracle tonight, dear sister here? Do you need a healing tonight? Come here quickly. I can see faith all over you tonight. What is your name? Ellen? Lift your hands up, Ellen. What do you need from God tonight? Breakthrough. Who's the person that doesn't sleep? Is there someone over here? You don't sleep well. You have not. Come with me quickly. Come. Is there someone else? You just can't get a good night's sleep. You toss and turn and roll and can't get comfortable and try and everything goes through your mind until you feel like your mind's just racing so fast. You need to sleep. The Bible says he gives his beloved sleep. And I speak to you. Sleep! 
Jesus' name. Have a little practice now. You're the same. My God. My God. Now in Jesus' name. Oh, good job. Another one. Hands up, my brother. If you can fix your ankle, he can give you sleep in Jesus' name. Come, sister. Come this way. Just hop over, brother. Leap across like a gazelle. That's it. Hands up. My God. Jesus' name. Sleep. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You're doing very well there, Dan. Jesus. Acid reflux. Someone over here. Hiatus hernia. Acid reflux. Who's that? Who is that? Acid. You get acid reflux. After you've eaten, you get that acid. Who is that? Who is that? Quickly, 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 quickly. Who's that? Where are you? Someone over here too. You just come. There's someone else over this side. Who's that? Who is that? Who is that? Just come. Just come. Anyone else with acid reflux, just come. Just come. Lift your hands to God. Go! Jesus' name. Go! Do you know... This is very left field. Someone who's really been, the prophetic area has been opening up to you in quite a strange way. Even where it seems like you've seen stuff written above individuals, something along that line, but the prophetic has just been opening very significantly to you. I feel like God wants to touch you in that area. Who, who is that? Who is that? Would you come? Would you come? Have you had stuff almost written over the head? That's you too. Come here. Come down this way. Lift your hands up to God. When the Spirit starts moving, something starts happening in you. When the power of God's flowing like this in a meeting, something just opens up to you. Things just start opening up and you, and you go, is this me? Is this, is this God? You need to sit down with Pastor Mark and have a talk about it because he's stirring something in your spirit. He's he's opening something up and there's some stuff that's... You can't even talk about some of the stuff that you've been seeing and wondering about it, but I tell you, God is opening things. God is opening things. Come here, Caleb. Put your hands up to God. I like this young man. He's just, he's just a quality young fellow. We've got some terrific young people here. I've just watched them grow over the years. Starting to feel old. They used to come up for drawings. He used to come up for drawings. Pastor Tim, can you draw me a frog? <laughs> that long ago. You've probably still got those drawings, have you, Kevin? My God, in the name of Jesus, impart a fire! <sighs> Come here, Dan. He's one of my best friends around the place. Dan the man. Got the best Aussie accent of all my friends. Even the Aussies. Hands up. Father, in Jesus' name, let these hands carry a remarkable anointing of power. The devil's done everything to knock you about and hurt you and tell you what, the power of God's like a fire in your belly. Jesus, like Jeremiah of old, the fire burns in your belly. God's going to use you. He's going to cause you to get aside with him. He's going to cause frustrations and hurts to become the very thing that drive you into the deep places of the spirit. He wants to take you into places that others are not willing to go in prayer. He wants to take you into places where you dig ditches and you begin to dig wells to hold water that others are too busy or lack the desire or the passion to go. He wants to take you where others won't go. And then he wants to anoint you in a way that others won't be anointed. He wants to take you into a tremendous place of supernatural presence and power and miracles. For the Jesus' name. Ooh, I'm nearly over. There's an anointing here tonight. But I want to do something. I do something quite different. 
talking to pastor today about the body ministry and how often the attention is on the preacher. All the attention was on Philip in Acts 8. But then he called Peter and John and said, Peter and John, come up, and they took over. And one of the things that is the role of an evangelist is not to try and do everything. But our job, he's given apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. How many people have had a passion for a long time to heal the sick? That's been your passion. In prayer, a passion to heal the sick. All right, I want you to leave your place and come down here. I don't know where we're going to put you because it's a little bit here like an explosion's occurred. But I want you to lift your hands and then we're going to do something tonight. It, it actually, I, re, I can recall and tell you the times that, move that pot plant, the times that I've come under the anointing of God when a man or a woman of God has laid hands on me, I can recall about half a dozen times when my life was electrified by the power of God. And I can trace back nights where I caught something that changed me forever. And we're going to do something tonight. I feel a loading of the Holy Ghost. And it's not just for me, it's to give. It's an anointing to give, to give, to give you tonight, my God. To give you now. To give you, to give you. Watch them, watch them, watch them, watch them. Power to impart now. To move in healing, to move in divine healing. Divine healing. Stay with me, guys. My friend. Power to touch and heal. Stay right with me. Want to move a little quicker? Power, maybe a couple of other guys. Power to heal the sick. In Jesus' name, an anointing of fire. Fire from heaven. My brother, how's your baby? Fire from heaven. That baby is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Come back here. Come back here. Come back. Fire and impartation. Power from heaven. If you're watching at home, on the internet, receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Don't drop anyone. Come back, come back, come back. Jesus. Power. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to go down here. We can create a line there that I can make my way down in a moment. Jesus. Jesus. Watch the light. Watch. Now, got to watch. Jesus. So it's strong here right now. Jesus. Jesus. Stay right with us. Stay right with us. Just watch one or two ahead even. Jesus. Because I tell you, the power of God is going right down this line. Just watch, watch, watch. Watch all the way, watching all the way. Jesus, the touch right now. We impart it. We impart that. My God, stay with me. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name, young fella. Jesus. Touch Hannah. Thank you, Lord. Impart. It's quite strong. It's very strong. Very strong here. God, it's very strong. Jesus. 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 
Jesus. Power from heaven. Good man, old Caleb. Power from heaven. Touch Josh. Touch these two. Use their lives. New steps, new steps. My God. Watch them, watch them, watch them, Jeremy. Power! Come up, guys. Take it, guys. Mrs. Rob, filled. Filled and drunk. Bring her back. I haven't prayed for Mrs. Rob for a while. Double that anointing. Bring her back. Bring her back. Power from heaven. Come back. She's a quiet lady, just quietly there. Tonight, she's getting the treatment from the Lord. Bring her back. Bring her back. Another dose. Power. I haven't prayed for you for a while, so we're making up for what we've missed. Bring her back. Power. That'll do. Tremendous miracles at your hand, Geneva. I want two guys. That's it. Jesus, power. And the prophetic. You have that prophetic gift, Geneva. You have a tremendous insight in the spirit. And the Lord wants you to stir it up. Stir up the gift that's in you by the laying of hands and, and prophecy. Move in it. Now, let me tell you, in a minute, Jesus Right across this building, there's going to be an operation of miracles. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, take it all. Take it all. Yeah. Jesus. Lizzie. There's a certain... It's like a goat track now. Fire from heaven. Stay right with us, guys. Power. Power. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power from heaven. Power from heaven. Yes. Yes, take it all. Take it all. Take it all. We got you. We got you. We got you. We got you. Just watch you for a moment. Power, John. Jesus. Jesus. I think it's good. Is it good? Is it good? Is it good? Is it good? Yes. Oh, yes. Jesus' name. It's all in that name. It's all in him. Jesus. This is not to do with man right now. This is the power of God. This is God touching people. This is, I'm just flesh and blood. I'm a bit of clay pipe right now, but I feel the power of God going through me like a fire. Like a fire. Fire. We give him the glory. Jesus. Hello, champion. Power from heaven. I know. Tell you what, that lady's speaking in tongues so fast that it's a miracle that she's not catching fire. My dear friend. Power! Power from heaven. I don't know how to get to the rest of you. Come down the front here, guys. There's a bit of a few spaces. Come and just fill these spots. Come and find a little spot. I want to pray for everybody, so come down here. Come down. We want to, don't want to miss anybody. Come and find a spot. That's give yourself a little space. Did you get healed the other night? You did? Oh my gosh, that's an anointing on you. Jesus, people are getting touched right now with power. It's good to be in church, Pastor Mark, isn't it? Jesus. He's having a good rest this week. He's just having a rest. He's relaxed. Jesus. Jesus. That's it. Oh, sister. Ho, ho. You've got the glory on you. You've got the glory of God all over you right now. There it is, there it is, there it is. Filled! My brother, filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled. Jesus. Filled and drunk on the new wine. And imparted with healing power. Who have we missed? Right. Just come down here, my brother. We've got a little line. Jesus. 
Oh, is Sister Happy? Jesus. Yes, I know. Hello, Brittany. Jesus. Power from heaven on you, Brittany. There it is. Like a river. Like a river. Like a river. Power from heaven. Power from heaven. Jesus' name. Watch you, watch you guys. Jesus. Just watch them, watch them. Jesus. Honestly, the power of God's getting on people before we pray for them. Power from heaven. Just watch them. Just watch them. Come here, sir, in this gap. Did you want prayer, sweetheart? Come here. My God, just touch her now. Touch her right now with power. Thank you, Lord. Touch her with the power of God. Fire from heaven now. Jesus. 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 Filled. Filled. At home, watching. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled. Hands up, my friend. Just step back over here a little. We're going to... Just sneak through there a little, bro, would you? That's it. I'll sneak past, sister. You okay? No, relax. Just relax. I won't walk on you. Jesus. Who have we missed? Anyone we've missed? Just come. Hello, sister. How are you? Are you happy tonight? You're a grinner. Lift your head. There's a lot of grinners in this church. They say grinners are winners. <laughs> I love being around happy people, don't you, Pastor Mark? I don't like being around people that look like they've sucked lemons and been baptised in vinegar. I like being around happy people. Happy ones. Jesus. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. Stop it, Tim. All right. The joy of the Lord your strength. Hallelujah. <laughs> Touch this dear lady. Power from heaven. That's tremendous anointing here. Now, here's the deal. We might have to just wait till everyone's been organized. I'll just take a seat for a minute. Just sit down here. Sister, how are you? That's it. We just relax. Oh, beautiful. Everybody lift up your hands to the Lord. People on the floor, lift your hands. Just drink in deeply. Let the glory of God fill you. Here's what I want you to do. When you're able to stand up, when you're able to stand, I'll get a couple of the guys, Jeremy and Adam and a few of the guys, just to help you up on your feet, even if you're a little bit wobbly. Just help them up as they feel like it's just about up time. Just help them up. Because we're going to pray for every sick person in the building. We can't really do that from the lying position. We can, but it wouldn't be easy. So we just help each one up. That's it. It's never good to go into this operating theatre and lift people off the operating bed. Don't go away. Don't go away, sister. Sister Rob, don't go. Sisters, don't run away, please. No one run away. Here's what I want you to do. Every sick person in this building, everyone that needs a miracle, you might have all just been down here on the floor. Every person in the building that's sick in your body, just stand to your feet, if you would. Just stand and lift up your hand. Just stand and lift your hand up. Now, I want people all over the building around them. Go and stand with them. Go to them. Don't let anyone... Here's a brother just standing here. I want some people to go to him. Just go straight to him. Don't stand back. Just go. That's the problem in the body of Christ. We stand around waiting for someone else. God will use us, but we stand around and wait for someone else. We think they're more like... Here's a brother standing on his own. A couple of people go to him. Go to him. Go to him. Yeah, don't miss. Look for someone. Look for someone. Find out what their condition is. Say, what's your condition? Try and get a catcher with you. If they look like they're going, 
Get a catcher? And I want you to start to pray for them. In Jesus' name, I want you to take authority. If they look like they're going under the power, then catch them. Then catch them. You've got to stand behind them and pray. Pray for them. That's right. Pray the healing power of God. That's right. Pray the healing power of God right now, right through the building. Let your power go through this building like a holy fire, like a fire. Let miracles break out right through the place. Folk, put your hand on the shoulder of the person right next to you. Let the power of God flow out of you tonight. Let the power of God flow out of you. Take your healing. Take your healing. Take your healing. Take your miracle. Take your miracle. People are getting healed. People are getting touched. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Let the healing power of Almighty God flood this building. Flood this building. Go and lay your hands on someone. Go and lay your hands on someone. God in Jesus' name. God in Jesus' Pastor Dave and Brother Dave, go and lay hands on someone. Go and get someone. Jesus. Jesus. Everybody in the building, go and lay your hands on someone. Find someone. Let the power of God loose. Let the power of God loose on them. Nikki, go and grab someone. Grab someone. You've got an anointing all over you. Go and grab someone. Jesus, 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 let the power flow out of you tonight. Go for it. Lay hands, go find someone to lay hands on. Go after it tonight. Go after it tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Let it flow. Now test it. Have we got a miracle over there? What's happened? What's happened? Somebody just got healed over here. What happened? What happened, bro? What happened? What happened? Sorry? Something's, you know something's happened. You know something's happened. You know it. We're having it. We're having it. We're having it. Let your power flow, Father, right through the building. Right through the building. Right through the building. Right through the building. Yes. Yes. Take your healing. Take it. Take it now. Take it now. Now, listen, listen now. Start to move that part of your body you couldn't move. Start to bend your back, move your neck, test your, test whatever. Do something you couldn't do. There's healing right now. Do something you couldn't do. Do it now. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. In Jesus' name, I'll move it. I like to move it, move it. That's it. Go in for it. Go after it. Jump on the situation. Jump on the situation. Take authority. Break its power. Break its power. Break its power. 
Sometimes we just have need a little bit of holy Clint Eastwood. Let me, trust me. I feel the healing power of God. I feel the healing power of God. I feel it. I feel it. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Question. How many people just got healed of something? Lift your hand quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Any advance on ten? Eleven? One hundred and three? Two hundred and seventy-one? Watching, watching on the internet. Receive your miracle. Move that part of your body. Move it. Move that part of your body. Just test it. Move it. In the name of Jesus, I command you to. Nicely, but firmly. Move it. Move it. Test it again. Okay, so it's still hurting. Move it again. Move it again. Let's take our seats. How's it going? We've got a victory happening. Got a, some fingers moving. Are you getting excited? I don't know who's more excited. We've got what's happening. What's, tell us what's going on, girls. Tell us the story. Sister laughing quite a bit. <laughs> His hand wasn't moving all the way. It wasn't closing all the way. And we've just watched it throughout the minutes. just starting to come closer and closer and closer. And it's just keep on. It's coming. It's coming. It's getting better and better. And we will not stop here. It keeps just getting better and better right here, right now. The interpretation of that is that the hand was not moving all the way, but it's coming, 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 coming. I think that was the interpretation, wasn't it? She was speaking in a, uh, a Chinese dialect from the... Uh, it was good. It was anointed, wasn't it? She's into it. Hey, listen, that was exciting what you shared, wasn't it? I'm not rebuking her for speaking Chinese. It was, come here, come here. You are just a champion, aren't you? What's your name again? You, Jacqueline. That's my wife's name. How do you spell it? J-A-C-Q-U-E-L-Y-N. That's my wife's name. And she's wild also. Lift your hands. Fire. Oh, she's over. She's over. She's over. All righty then. She's a terrific young lady. She, she's, she's quite wild in the Holy Ghost. I love that. She was like, I could interpret it because of just years of the gift of interpretation and, and, and a knowledge of a little bit of Chinese. Sick power, me. Have you eaten? She's great. She's full. Are you, how are you going? Happy? Look at these ladies. Are you happy? This one's crying. Oh, come here. Come up here. Come up here. Is that nice? Could you feel the power of God coming out of you then? Have you had that feeling before? And you like it? Well, keep praying for the sick. Anything you want to say? Okay. Jesus. Come here. Yeah, good teamwork, guys. What's your name? Monica. Do you know her? Yeah. You look very related? No. Just friends? You are Annika. Yeah, Annika. That's Christmas. Oh, that's Hanukkah. <laughs> Lift your hands. It's actually, it, Hanukkah is actually, is actually the celebration of the cleansing of the temple by the Maccabeans. That's John's daughter. Is it? Yeah. Our John. Yeah. So you're John's daughter. Yeah. I know John. <laughs> well, no wonder his daughter's a bit wild in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Lift your hands up, John's daughter. Annika. Oh, <laughs> come back, come back. Don't run away. Power from heaven. Come here, sister. What's your name? What is it? Zoe, do you know why you've got dimples? I'll tell you. When you're a baby, 
The Lord was pretty impressed with what he'd made. And he reached down and he went, nice job. That is his thumbprint and that is his fingerprint. That's a statement. He just went, ooh, nice. You know how you grab a baby like this or you go like that? He just grabbed you a little bit harder because he was excited about what you're going to do for him. That's right. So he just went, ooh, she's going to do good things. <laughs> Did you know that? Power from heaven. Come here, you two brothers. Amen. And you too, Zach. Come up, brother. Come in. Were you in that praying group? Were you, Snake? You're becoming fired up for the Holy Ghost, aren't you? Jesus. Oh, Caleb, do exploits. Have a scripture for you. Daniel 11:32, part B in the King James says, those that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. You must have, I've got grandsons, the amusement levels are high. Joshua would be probably the funniest kid I've ever met. I'd take him out in the car, have hang days, we'd just hang out. I laugh pretty consistently all day. Jeez. My grandkids cost me substantial amounts of money though, brother. <laughs> they are a bottomless pit. Nine of them. <laughs> Question. Question. Close your eyes, please. How many people sitting in this building do not know Jesus Christ as your Saviour? You've never been born again by the Spirit of God. You do not have a living relationship with Christ. You know about him, but you've never really come to know him and commit yourself to him so that he is yours and you are his. But tonight you'd say, I want to go all the way for Jesus. I need you, Lord, as my saviour tonight. Maybe you're backslidden. You say, I'm sick and tired of being a backslider. It's time for me to come back to God while there's time. You may be here for the first night tonight. You've heard the gospel maybe a couple of times, but you've said, no, nah, I'm not ready. But tonight, you know that God's speaking to you. If God is talking to you tonight, you say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to come back to him. I want to find him for the first time or just come into that relationship with him wherever you are. All across this building, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand nice and high so I can see it and then put it down. I see a hand there. God bless you. See your hand. Who's that? Where is that person? Just over there. Anyone else? Quickly. Quickly, just lift it up. I see another hand there. God bless you. Is there someone else? Quickly. Quickly, 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 quickly. Anyone else in this building would say, tonight is my night. If you're watching there at home, tonight you're going to pray a prayer with me in a moment and you're going to give your life to Jesus. It's going to be the start of a whole new life. Is there someone else? Is there someone else? I don't want to prolong this. I don't want to wrestle. just want to give you an opportunity for the greatest the greatest life-changing experience that ever can happen where Christ himself actually comes to take residence within you, to cleanse you of every sin you've ever committed and to become your Lord and Master. Anyone else? I would like those two hands. I don't, it's a couple of folk that lifted their hand just over here. I wonder, let's all stand together. And I didn't see who it was, but there are a couple of hands went up I want those that lifted their hands back there just to come right now. Would you do that? A couple of folk that lifted their hand over here. Just come. Just come. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just come. That's it. Is there anyone else? All over the building, turn to the person next to you and say, if you want to go and give your life to Christ, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. Just ask that person next to you. Say, if you want, it, if you want Christ tonight, I'll go with you. I'll make that step with you tonight. I'm going to do something now. I'm going to hand back to Pastor, Pastor Mark. He's going to lead you into a living relationship with Jesus. I'm going to go and sit down over there and I'm going to introduce you to him because he's the pastor here and I'm the travelling rogue preacher that comes through every now and again and causes a bit of a stir and I'm going to sit down but I want Pastor Mark to lead you in the most important prayer of your life. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mark. Absolutely. Just let your hands towards heaven right now. Close your eyes. Start talking to Jesus. Say, Jesus. 
Come into my heart. Transform my life. I'm going to live the rest of my life for you. Holy Spirit, come fill me right now. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that transforms lives. Right now, in the name of Jesus, everything about your life, new heart, new spirit, yours. Right now, in the name of Jesus, everything about your life, transformed with the power of God. A new heart and a new spirit, yours. Christ Jesus lives here in this place today. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, in the name of Jesus, you never doubt ever again for the rest of your life whether or not you belong to the living God. In the mighty name of Jesus, from this day forward, you're his. He's yours. He lives in you. You walk in him. Everything about your life is defined by him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for the anointing. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Just let your hands towards heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence. Tonight, there will not be a single person who leaves this place the same as they came in. The troubles, the problems, the issues, the temptations that overwhelmed you, the besetting sins that try to continually take you out will not have the authority over your life that they have had. Everything about your life changes because you're stepping into a realm of heaven to live in the presence of the Lord Jesus that's going to satisfy everything that you've ever desired. And so those other things are going to come along and they're going to be meaningless. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Tomorrow night, we're going to be here at 7 o'clock. And we are expecting an explosive Holy Ghost meeting. The one thing that we want to see everybody leave these meetings with is a confidence and a boldness in the faith that they can go everywhere and do exactly what Jesus commanded us to go everywhere and do. Tomorrow, you come expecting God to touch you in the most radical way. You come expecting God to be able to freely do all those things that he's promised to do through and by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I promise you, you're going to see the greatest miracles, signs, and wonders and moving of the power of God that you've ever seen in your life. I want you to go find some people that are sick, diseased, people who are lost, who do not know or believe in the power of God, and I want you to compel them to come. I go, you can go out tomorrow and find people that need proofs. Just find a bunch of people out there that just needs, need proof. And you, get a, you make plans to go pick them up your car, whatever you got to do to bring them. And we'll see the power of the living God take care of all the rest. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you that the things that have stood in the way of your people being effective won't be able to stand in the way anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the life of Jesus Christ, the abundant life, the life of divine power and authority will be found in them as they go home. As they sleep through the nights, they wake up in the morning, they just supercharge with the power of your wonderful working grace to go every place and do exactly what you command us to do. <laughs> Represent heaven. Amen. Amen. Well, find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them that you love them, and, and make sure that, that you remind them they're going to be back. Just tell them you'll see them here tomorrow night.